Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. I think I've graduated into that realm where I fall. I'm not cheering for teams, per se, as people. I want Henry Burris and the Jacksonville Jaguars yeah. to do well. And what do you think Henry Burris will do for young Trevor Lawrence, who's now a sophomore? There, He outlived... Urban Myers, ten, oh uh, ten years head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He probably aged about five years in about six months there. Uh, you know what Hank brings? We all know what Hank brings. He brings that positive attitude. You know, mm-hmm. no matter what, um, and it brings that experience. You know what? One thing that Hank was really good at, especially when he was playing the Riders, was throwing interceptions. <laughs> but he always did seem to have the ability to bounce back uh, throughout his career and stay positive. You, I remember, you know, any interview you did with the guy was positive, and I think he could. Have have a nice calming influence on a young guy that has had success at every single level. Like you think of some of these first round draft picks at high school, stud, goes to Clemson, uh, stud. And you come in and you're in a situation with Jacksonville and especially with Urban Meyer, uh, you know, that maybe is a little difficult. That's hard to deal with when your whole life has been pretty easy when it comes to the football field. So dealing with adversity and keeping a positive attitude, I think those are, you know, the things that Henry could really have, uh, you know, a calming influence on a guy like Trevor Lawrence. Nuts and bolts. It's not just between Trevor Lawrence knows how to throw a football. I mean, that's that's not what uh, Hank needs to teach him. There's no question that kid knows how to sling it. It's it's the mindset and the positive attitude and then the bounce back mentality. Get ready for the Rob Peterson Show. Maybe tomorrow I'll tell you guys about the big game that I went to in San Antonio with Snoop Dogg. Remember that one, Clark? The Lakers and Spurs? Snoop Dogg and I went, Bob. How about that? Snoop Dogg was sitting courtside. I was up in the nosebleeds, but we were in the arena at the same time. We were, I was there with him. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the RP Show. Football Friday. Live in the bunker, streaming and televising from IKS Studios. Here in the sweatpants capital. I am your uh, pilot. <laughs> what, Wes? You like that? Sweatpants capital. The sweatpants yeah. capital. You're I got overdressed. My sweatpants. You're overdressed. <laughs> yeah. We got the Hall of Famer, the Wes Cates, joining us here, the pride of Columbus, Ohio. And I told Wes, we're going to talk about some things that he's not used to talking about. Obviously, we're going to talk about CFL football. And don't be nervous. No. You can handle it, right? I've interviewed you enough times over the years. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just interested to get your take on a few things that are Columbus-related, believe it or not. Uh-oh. Pull that mic in a little more if you don't mind. Um, All right. Wes Cates in hour one and Nick Lewis in hour two right here in the bunker. Two tremendous CFL greats and Hall of Famers. I'm blessed. We're all blessed to have these guys with us today to talk ball. Now... Those are the guests. I'll get into the quick six show topics in a moment, but what was going to be my sixth point has become breaking news. Very appropriately, my Calgary Stampeders bell. Boo. <laughs> I played for, for one year. Yeah, yeah. They, they broke me into the league, so That's I, can't, right. I can't hate them too much. Jim Barker. Hey, Dave Dickinson will not be coaching tonight for the Calgary Stampeders. He's gone into COVID protocol. I don't know all of the details around this other than to say that Dickie won't be there. Mark Killam is going to assume the head coaching duties for tonight's game at Ottawa for the Calgary Stampeders. And John Huffnagel is going to come out of the press box down to the sidelines. And I'm reading all this by virtue of our friends from Calgary, Mark Stephen, the voice of the Stampeders, Jock Wilson, the pre- and post-game guy, uh, saying that Huff will be there in a supportive role. And I'll just come up with it right now. Our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center is this. Can the Calgary Stampeders win in Ottawa tonight without Dave Dickinson. I think it. I think it's a pretty easy answer. But let me throw this over to the Hall of Famer, the uh, Rough Riders' second all-time leading rusher, Wes Cates. How would you answer that? Can they win without Dickey? Yeah, I think that they'll be fine. There's there's enough going on. There's enough prep going on during the week, and I think you have a, a seasoned veteran quarterback that maybe you let him call some plays or work with the the coach that's going to step in and call plays. 
and uh, they work it out. They figure it out. It might not look as crisp, but I, yeah. I think it'll it'll be enough to beat Ottawa for sure. Well, and this just came down this morning. This has been teetering for the last 12 to 24 hours that this might happen. And I see the Stampeder fans are writing in. Hey, they're alive and they're awake. Jeff, the Stamps fan, writing in. Says, no, Dave Dickinson, no problem. Killam will fill in flawlessly. And I feel like this is, uh, this is Mark Killam just, ah, here's my chance. Almost hoping that Dickey doesn't clear protocol. <laughs> I say that facetiously because I love Mark Killam. But he wants to be a head coach. Um, it's like Prince Charles, I think, when he's shampooing his hair in the morning. And he says, I just can't wait to be king because he will be. When Queen Elizabeth's gone. Well, for Mark Killam, Queen Elizabeth is gone for tonight anyways. Killam's been biding his time for a while, That's what I'm man. saying. He was, he was a strength and conditioning coach when, when I was there? there. Yeah. I, I was, wonder, because that was 2006. Yeah. yeah, yeah Mark's yeah. been around that long. Yeah. It's a long time to wait for an opportunity. So we wish Mark Killam well. And uh, to be honest with you, before we, we're really getting ahead of ourselves. But that's the breaking news. And for the Stamps fans and Ottawa Red Blacks fans, that's today's uh, pregame show. And we'll see you tonight, film at 11. Can you hit the quick six show horn, please, Director Jordan? Um, we will get to your questions. This is our 813th show, and you guys still don't get it. This is our time. This is our time. And then we'll get to the viewer questions. So just hold on. Don't get your panties in a bunch. We'll get to it. Number one, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers kept their perfect record going with a 35-20 win over the Montreal Alouettes Thursday night. Tied at 14 going into the fourth quarter, the Blue Bombers scored three straight touchdowns to put the game out of reach before Montreal scored one more late in the game. Two sides going back to Winnipeg next week to do it again. This one was in McGill. It was, was, did you watch it? It was a hell of a game. It was a good game, and Montreal had them. There was a couple of times early where they really should have put six on the board. They settled for field goals, and it just kept – it seemed like uh, Winnipeg's momentum and their confidence just kept building as as Montreal was struggling to get in the end zone. And then they kept it close, but obviously the champs just had the moxie and and definitely had the the strength to overpower the team and literally just take it over in the fourth. It was it was a shame to watch because I thought Montreal really played a played a good game and had well, and it should have been closer than that. The final score for sure. They're getting there, but yeah. they were going up against. What could be the best CFL team ever? Blue Bombers are now 9-0. and yeah. The topic came up yesterday, West Bomber fans. We have a lot of Winnipeg viewers. They're saying, do you think the Bombers can go 18-0? And I said no because nobody's ever done it, mm-hmm. but they're still damn good. Scary good. They're looking, they're looking right. really good, and they're looking yeah. like, for whatever reason, the football guys just keep letting the ball bounce their way, even in – the games that it looks like they're going to find a way to lose, they, the other team makes a mistake and they capitalize on it and end up uh, on top of when the when the time's finished. So uh, it's, it's annoying to watch. I don't want to see a team be that good, but I can't hate on them right now. They're actually playing great football and finishing games really well. And everybody's coming at them with their best shot. So for them to withstand all that for the first nine weeks and, and not look like they're really slowing down at all is, is impressive. It's not annoying to me really at all. And no. for you, in some cases, it's not for one reason. For you, Richie Hall. I mean, who doesn't love Richie? Yeah. I mean, we're happy for that. You don't know Zach well or if at all. Calero, no, but so. he's an Ohio kid. So. Right. He's Steubenville. Steubenville. Yeah. 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 Big deal sacked. there, He right? got sacked and picked off by a, apparently a high school buddy or underling. Uh, I can't remember the DB's On the opening name. series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number 12, I believe. I yeah. don't know what He's his name is. He's from Steubenville, too. It's a hell of a game. All, those great, all great football players. Come from Steubenville. Most great football Ohio. players come yeah. from Ohio. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Randy from Winnipeg watching says, Interesting trend. Bombers won the Cup in 1958 and 1959. In 1960, they started 10-0 and lost the Cup. Could it happen again? One week at a time. That's all we need to know. While we're on the Ohio vein, Mm. and listen, any nincompoop can sit here and talk about the scores in the games. It's the stories that are great. And I have one about Zach and Steubenville, but I want to ask you about Columbus. Because if I can skip forward here, point four, Jonathan Huberto signing an eight-year extension with the Calgary Flames for a $10.5 million annual value. How about that, Jonathan Huberto with the Flames? How about that? Nobody's talking about Johnny Gaudreau anymore who's gone to Columbus. We've had, do you know we air in all over Ohio this show on Buckeye Cable? Oh, yeah? We do. Game Plus nice. Television carried in uh, the three C's. 
I'm gonna have to tell my family. Col- yes, tell Big check West. Me out. Yeah, yeah. Columbus, <laughs> Cincinnati, Cleveland. We're on in all those towns. Nice. Plus Toledo, which you're wearing the hat. Yeah, yeah. So Co- Columbus collect, uh, connection. We had Ryan Murray in here earlier this week. Spent seven years with the Blue Jackets. He just won a Stanley Cup with Colorado. He says that Johnny Gaudreau, the newest Columbus Blue Jacket, will be recognized on the streets of Columbus. He's a big. Yeah. He's not physically big, but he's a big star. What, what's he walking into in Columbus as, an, as a great with the Blue Jackets? Columbus is a sports town. They love, as long as you can do some winning, Columbus is going to pay attention. They're going to follow. They're going to come out and support. And they're going to get to know you and love you as long as you're not, uh, you know, as long as you're easy to talk to and, and willing to interact with the fans, they'll, they'll take you in and treat you like one of their own. So he's in a good spot. They've definitely built up the town kind of around that, that new Blue Jacket Stadium, the Arena District. I guess it's not new now. It's getting, I guess, over a decade old. But it's a great place, great great, great town to play any sport, really. Yeah, so the the one thing Ryan Murray said, though, is that the Buckeyes are the gods. Like, yeah, could they, Justin Fields walk down the street and not be mobbed? Or would he yeah. be mobbed? Uh, I think he'd be mobbed I'm, yeah. <laughs> to an extent. I think, yeah, everything kind of comes to play second fiddle to, to the Buckeyes. But there's still there's still room for, I mean, we got pro soccer, we got hockey, you know what I mean? And there's, yeah. It, there's other just, things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hockey's not real high on that list. Yeah. I mean, it they is. have a good facility. Even, even the Columbus Clippers, the baseball team, they're right behind the, the Blue Jackets stadium, and that whole area gets a lot of activity, a lot of action, and a lot of fans. See, I'm coming at you with some stuff that you don't normally talk about on the air. Mm-hmm. It's fun, right? Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a change. <laughs> and here's another one from a story standpoint. I saw, I'm watching the game last night, and they had the graphic that Zach Caleros was 12-5 and five as a quarterback for the Riders. That's pretty damn good. The problem mm-hmm. is when they needed him, he was not physically, he was on the pup list. Physically unable to perform. Yeah, I right? don't know. Yeah, Zach is. It's like night and day because he was. Yes. Everybody was thinking his next hit was going to be maybe the one to put him in a wheelchair or something like that. Now he's running around and sling like he was looking really accurate and strong and running around last night. I I was impressed. He just seems like he's kind of yeah. kind of settled into to the quarterback, the individual that he knows he was supposed to be, right? But who saw it coming? <laughs> Literally nobody other yeah, than yeah. the Bombers. And you mentioned the luck yeah. and the ball bounces. I'm starting to want I don't really believe in luck. No? You do things right, you get a lot luckier. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the harder I you agree, work and the more right things you do. But anyways, yeah. I'll tell you a story. True story. Me, Chris Jones, and Zach Caleros are riding around in a car. That group. True story. Yeah, how'd that happen? We were, uh, where were we? <laughs> Toronto or Vancouver? Can't remember. You know, you were like, you know when you go in the day before the game and you yeah, go in yeah, for yeah. the media? Early, early media day. That yep. was us. So we okay. were in the vehicle. And we had a driver. And I just sat back and listened. Believe it or not. And Jones and Zach Caleros went back talking Ohio high school football names going back 50 years. Oh, not wow. to mention Cincinnati Bobcats and OSU, OSU Buckeyes and staffs. And I looked at Zach. I'm like, how old are you? Right. He's got like a 100-year-old soul and a 32-year-old body. And it tells me that he will go on to coach when this is done. He's just that kind of – he just could sit – him and Jones – can you imagine a conversation between those two guys? I envy guys like that because I have a cousin, Gary Tate, who it was the same way, and we're like two months apart. So he was. we would always talk about who's this and who's that when we were coming up through high school and college, and I'd be like, who? I don't even know who you're talking about, but he knew everybody in every nook and cranny, every corner of the state. He just followed that stuff, him and his dad, so also Gary, yeah, exactly Gary like Tate. That. <laughs> and then furthermore, sorry, it's just like me and Wes rapping here, but I yeah. think people enjoy it. Uh, so we get talking about – home owning in Toronto mm-hmm. and Zach's wife's from there and they're from a fairly affluent neighborhood and uh, Zach was saying oh there's investors from outside the country that just buy a house here one of these mansions to say that they live here mm-hmm. uh, for whatever tax purposes and stuff and yeah. I said well they should rent those houses out and Zach's like they don't need the money Rod <laughs> they, don't. <laughs> they don't like why <laughs> there's that. they don't need the money Rod why would they rent it out okay I'll just shut up and sit over here <laughs> but, it, but it doesn't offend me. I've been around these guys all the time. It's the way we talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Zach's just very direct, and I just get a bang out of him. And overall, 12-5 and five is a rider starter. And he raised money for his hometown of Steubenville Police Department to have those cameras that they strap on their chests so the cops can go in. 
Zach raised the money for it through his really? charity foundation. So I just don't understand why he wasn't more popular in Saskatchewan when he was here. Apparently, he's a good buddy of Andy Fantus as well. This guy, that doesn't man. surprise me. Yeah, Zach, I got to get get around Zach. I got to hang out with this Zach, guy. Zach is the light. <laughs> he just exudes. He vibrates very high. Yeah. But the thing is, when you see him on television, he looks like a prick. And he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to you got to get to know him. Yeah. I guess is and I would hope I maybe that's what people say about me. Anyways, the 163rd <laughs> running of the Queen's Plate is taking place on Sunday, August 21st. A day full of the best Canadian thoroughbred racing, great fashion, amazing food and loads of fun. Get your tickets today at woodbine.com or play along with Woodbine's Dark Horse Bets app available for Android and Apple devices. It looks like they had a bang up time last night at Woodbine. We have Jim Lawson coming on later, don't we Clark today? Yeah, the CEO of Woodbine Entertainment, Jim Lawson, will be with us to talk about what went on last night at Canada's racetrack and, again, the Queen's Plate. That's a lot of time on point one and the breaking news. We move on to point two. NFL, the Las Vegas Raiders gave coach Josh McDaniels a successful homecoming in his debut on the sideline. Josh Jacobs, rookie Zamir White, and Austin Walter ran well in a rain-soaked field in Canton, Ohio, as the Vegas Raiders routed Jacksonville 27-11 in the Hall of Fame game. It spoiled coach Doug Peterson's first game with the Jaguars. From a personnel standpoint, Derek Carr and Devontae Adams warmed up for the Raiders, but they didn't get a chance to play their first game together since they were together at Fresno State. Uh, Jacksonville's Trevor Lawrence wore a backwards cap on the sideline. Third-string quarterback Jake Luton started. The NFL's first preseason game began 40 minutes late due to severe weather that forced fans to seek shelter. I wanted to watch some of it, Wes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. Did you see any of it? I saw a little what bit. What was it on? It was. I think it was on like TSN2 or okay. something like that. I didn't or maybe, catch a snap of it. How yeah, did it I know look? it was supposed to air on NBC, too, but then I couldn't. I don't think anyway. Yeah, it was it was all right. It was kind of what I expected. Like considering the the two teams in their their last season, I think Josh Jacobs has the potential to be the best running back in the league. I think he's that caliber of back. And then with the the presence that Devontae Adams is going to bring, I think it's going to open up the run game. And they apparently stacked the O line a little bit this year in the off season. So I think. What we saw out of that preseason game was kind of indicative of how those two teams are probably going to be for at least the first half yep. of this year in the NFL. I, yeah. And I don't mind spending a minute or two on this. Uh, the point spread yesterday was 1.5. Uh, was it 1.5 or 2.5 the Raiders were favored? So they covered. But the only visual I saw of the game was Henry Burris's Instagram. You got to love Hank. He, he made an Instagram <laughs> reel of walking onto the field in Canton. And I've always kind of wanted to look at what that field looks like from field level. We've seen mm -hmm. the Hall of Fame induction speeches. We've watched the games there. But yeah. here's Hank walking out like this. Can you imagine a coach doing that? That yeah. would be Hank. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, now you see <laughs> like you see so many guy players, and well, yeah. I guess the players that aren't actually in uniform doing it yeah, at, at every game, right? And then, of course, <laughs> Hank. Hank's always been that type of guy, though. He was always a cool, like he's very astute and smart guy, but also very down to earth and uh, has a lot of fun. So I think if there's any guy in that age bracket that would do it, it's, it's Henry Burst. <laughs> we are going to get into more of this. We're only two points into the quick six. Wes Cates with us now, Nick Lewis coming up, and Jim Lawson, the CEO of Woodbine Entertainment. It's the warm-up. You're watching on the Game Plus television network. We're also live streaming on YouTube. And you can always catch the podcast wherever you enjoy your podcasts, including Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, Google, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG. Always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Number 
A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC. Making back to busy easy. Snacking all around. Something everyone can love. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. City X is underway. I'm not sure what day it is. Four, I think. Blessed with tremendous weather down there at uh, Regina Exhibition Park. Um, hey, by the way, we're brought to you in part by Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Find everything you need to know about our services, financing, product information, and more at broncoplumbing.com. We're moving on in the quick six show topics here to point three. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hit a three-run homer. Teo, as they call him, Teo Hernandez, homered for the second straight day. And the Toronto Blue Jays cruised to a 9-3 win over the Minnesota Twins last night. Whit Merrifield, who revealed earlier in the day that he's now vaccinated, and cleared to play in Canada, had two hits for the Jays. Uh, yeah. Hey, did you see the spot from Edo, Japan? We got to mention Edo to Japan. Have you eaten at Edo, Japan, West Cates? Edo? Yeah. Of course you have. To. You're I a healthy to, guy. Yeah, yeah, but not, not lately. Get yeah. down there. Get yeah. you some. I see they got new bubble tea. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> With more than 160 restaurants nationwide, Edo, Japan is proud to be Canadian-owned. And operated for more than 40 years. We love us some Edo Japan. Now, to the viewers uh, regarding Zach Caleros, Jack in Vulcan, Alberta says, Zach is the best quarterback in the league by a country mile at this moment. Steubenville is the home of Dean Martin, member of the Rat Pack. Uh, Wayne in BC, Zach Caleros comes across as quiet and unassuming with the press, but I think he's showing how good of a quarterback he really is with the Bombers. He's... Is he the best player in the league, Wes? I think he's he looks like it right now. Yeah. I mean, I, what other quarterback can you say is really playing at that level? Maybe Bo Levi, but they, yeah, they, I guess they've had their struggles. Nathan Rourke, the West Canadian, yeah, 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 yeah. But where did he play? 
Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All he, he the good ones. He finished three years of college at Ohio. That's probably why he's so good right now. But, no, his completion percentage is great. And I think as far as accuracy and, and percentage and yardage, I think that he's comparable. But Zach just looks like he's kind of playing on another level right now, just really accurate. I was watching some of the throws. He was – putting pretty much right on the money really gives his receivers the best chance at going up and making plays. At some point, yeah. Buck Pierce should be getting some credit here. The offensive coordinator, and I don't know if he's yeah. the quarterback's coach at Winnipeg, but just because, yeah, you want to, you. Yeah. we want to give Zach credit. He deserves it, but yeah. he looks, dude, no, there's a lot better be than said. he ever has. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about just uh, as a coach finding ways to have athletes work to be better on a day-by-day basis because, you know, the – the skills are there, but when you have a coach that kind of nitpicks and doesn't let you get comfortable in, in your greatness and you keep excelling and getting better, I think yeah, you have to give some of that credit to your coaching. Uh, spending a lot of time on last night's Bombers 35-20 win over the Montreal Alouettes. Again, tonight, the breaking news. Dave Dickinson won't coach for the Stampeders. He's in COVID protocol. Mark Killam will be on the sidelines for the Calgary Stampeders tonight at the Ottawa Red Blacks. That's our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Can the Stampeders win without Dave Dickinson on the sidelines? I didn't tweet it yet, Clark, so I don't have a Twitter uh, result. What, what are they saying on YouTube? What's the right now the vote? Eighty-eight <laughs> percent say yes. We we the stamps could win with your grandma coaching at Ottawa <laughs> tonight. I would think. And uh, hey, Ottawa Evans, that kid is looking better. Ottawa's cute. Caleb Evans. Yeah, yeah. I thought Caleb Jeremiah Evans. Masoli. Well, I guess he's hurt. But yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, Ottawa has a good team. But I mean, the head coach is really. Once the game starts, they're really just coordinating and yelling at the guys who are messing up. So if you're doing your job, you might not even interact with the head coach <laughs> throughout the whole game. You know what I mean? I, I mean, there there's certain spots in the game where the head coach influences things. But if you have your defense coordinator, your offensive coordinator calling plays, the head coach is really just managing and making sure people are doing it the way he wants it done. The great Eric <laughs> Tillman said, players win and coaches lose. Never forgot it. <laughs> Think about it. You know yeah. what a savant Tillman is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got you. Hey, he's, he's the reason why I am the rider great that I am because I was in Calgary backing up Reynolds and playing fullback, uh, American playing fullback. I must have been good. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> so, again, write it down. Players win, coaches lose. It's a Tillmanism. Now, we've gone 25 minutes into the program on this Football Friday. And they're dying to get your take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders who've mm. lost three in a row. They're four and four. They're on a bye week. They say they've gone home to figure it out. Mm-hmm. What's your take? You, Wes is on the pre and post game show for the football uh, broadcast. Yeah. So what's they're hot around here, huh? Yeah, they're 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 not too happy. It, they needed this break. They needed this bye week. I think a lot can be accomplished in a bye. I think that they're definitely. A team that has the horses, has the the bodies, but they've also been hurt. They've had a little controversy with suspensions. Some of their best players have been out. Their two bookend Russians have been hurt. So I think once they get back off of this bye, get some guys back healthy, we'll be able to see them playing at their best. Uh, But it's still got to kind of come down to, I think the only only issues they have is up front and just some inconsistent play from from, uh, their quarterback. I mean, other than that, I think they're fine, but... Definitely got to have the O-line step up, and and Cody Fajardo has got to just get – just relax and just trust the guys around him and just do his job because it seems like he's just always expecting a rush, always trying to escape the rush even when there is no rush, and it's affecting his accuracy and, and, and just hitting, hitting guys on time. He, he's constantly been late – and behind on throws, and I think guys are really working hard to get open for him, and he's just too scared of the protection that he's getting from his old line, so he's just not playing his best ball, which is something you can't do. you got to trust your guys up front, and you take a couple shots, but deliver the ball on time and accurate. Um, comments from the viewers. Jordan Ewart in the chat says, classic overreaction from Ryder fans. Mm-hmm. You'd think we'd be used to it by now. Yeah. From Mike Horrigan in Toronto, he says, great to see you back in the bunker, RP, if only for a week. And that's the truth. We are going to the World Juniors for the next two weeks, beginning Monday. Mm-mm-mm-mm. James in Borden, Manitoba says, even though I'm a Bomber fan, I listen to Wes on CKRM, and he is great. 
Yes, he's great. We uh, don't put Rudy Poos on this show. We only have the best. <laughs> and so, but here's the thing. I mentioned that Hoppy sat in that chair yesterday, Jim Hobson. And a rider I, great. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I said, what's the rider's problems? He goes, the O-line isn't very good. And yeah. I see this all the time, and I'm thinking, it was okay when they were 2-0 and and Dan Clark was healthy. Like, yeah. is that where it all begins and ends? You see the think- play callings getting criticized by Jason Maz. Yeah, and I wonder if that's just a, a, a Moss really knowing that his O-line can't protect for long enough or if this is just the type of plays he wants to call. Because a lot of short – I mean, uh, you can't really say your, your completion percentage is great when half of the balls that you throw are, are caught behind the line of scrimmage. And I, I just don't think they're attacking downfield. If I, was a, if I was an offense coordinator, I'm throwing – three to five, like, just bombs every game. you got to stretch the defense, and I just don't feel like they either feel confident enough to do that, don't think they have the time to do that, or I, I don't know what it is. But at the end of the day, I think Moss and Cody are the, are the two people that really need to take it upon their shoulders to, to open things up and, and be a better offense and help this defense out. I mean, the defense is unbelievable, but you can't lean on them all game. These guys are playing way too many snaps. And then it's rolling over into the special teams because a lot of these defensive guys play special teams. So by the end of the game, they're getting worn down. And that's why we're seeing some of these big returns. It all kind of compounds on itself because the offense can't sustain drives, can't put points on the board. So it's injuries leading to the offensive his problems I think yeah I think well they didn't have depth to begin with they were kind of suspect then you take your leader and the toughest guy on the team probably Dan Clark and you lose him and now you're moving guys around you've had three different guys playing center you've been changing out guards and tack- it just it doesn't yeah guys just have to get comfortable in their spot and it's really important I mean you win and lose games in the trenches and clearly right now the riders are out outmatched at the offensive line position. It's as simple as that. Now we're getting to the heart of the matter. Mm-hmm. Mike Horgan in Toronto says Cody Fajardo is not that guy. Isn't it obvious? Well, the Riders are paying him like he is mm-hmm. at close to a half a million dollars a year. He's the highest paid rough rider of all time without having won a great cup. I, not only do I think he's the guy, but that's just because I love him. Personally, I love him professionally. Yeah. Cody can do no wrong in my eyes ever, and that might be a fault of my own, but I kind of favor loyalty. Really? Yeah. Jer- but Jeremy O'Day clearly feels the same way because yeah. if he's not that guy, yeah. as Mike's saying, or the fans, then O'Day <laughs> goofed. That's a fact. I think Cody is everything you want in a quarterback outside of, actually playing the position I don't think he's got the biggest arm I think he can be accurate but he hasn't always been accurate this season and I think I don't know what it is but definitely I've watched it I've I've tried to be critical but not be too too critical and I'm just looking at his feet and his placement and the way he moves before he's throwing when he's getting ready to throw when he gets the ball like fresh off the snap he just doesn't seem to have any type of consistent foot movement. He's not stepping into his throws, and that's why he's inconsistent. I think everybody loves There's no reason not to love Cody. He's a religious guy. He's a great leader. He's on social media. He's great to the fans. He seems to get along with all his teammates. But that doesn't mean that you're out there executing at the level you need to execute at. And I think I don't know if we're seeing that as much as we need to. <clears throat> Two quarterbacks that you played with, Kerry Joseph and Darian Durant, were they perfect? No, not not at all. Not and even close. Definitely, and definitely, when their protection wasn't perfect, they they got worse as well. So I think it all it all adds up and 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 makes this this mess that you kind of you, what you don't want to do is start pointing fingers, but you can't really blame it on the lack of protection. You just gotta like what I saw from Gola, Dola Gala. He. Stood he in there. To, yeah. He stood in there and took some shots, but he waited on his receivers to get open, and he and he had some pretty good completions. And I feel like Cody's kind of getting out of the way a little early. You know what I mean? Well, Todd Pinkney, one of our viewers, says 100% Cody is not that guy. We need to play Jake Moore and groom someone ASAP. He's talking about Dola Gala. Mm-hmm. Should Fajardo have played last week against BC in your mind? I don't think he should have. I think they, because it seems, they seem to be talking about this knee issue and, oh, he's not feeling his best and all that. Well, then let the, let the guy sit and try to get as healthy as he can. You, he missed a game 
you only had one game to play. I understand it was a divisional game and you wanted to get the win, but you didn't get the win. And now he doesn't get as long of a rest as he could have had. Now do we come back from the bye and, oh, he's still in the brace. His knee's still bugging him. He's not really – he can't step into his throws like he, he can't He can't escape like he wants to. Like, are we going to blame this whole season on the knee? You know, is that's what I, I didn't want. Now that's going to be a factor. I think they should have just set him and, and tried to steal one at home from B.C. I guess it would have been stealing one. but Right. <laughs> well, know? I didn't watch the game. I was in yeah. – Moraine Lake. You been there in Alberta? No. Unbelievably beautiful. No nice. television, no cell service. Mm. So I didn't watch the game. But I did somehow see that the Riders were up 17-4 in the second quarter, and I thought, ah, they're probably going to win this if they lock it down. And then people tell me that a brain fart by Mario Elford yeah. unraveled the whole game. It wasn't just Mario Elford. Elford should have stayed in. He had a chance to just take it up the near sideline and really get out to at least at 15 or 20, but he tried to do too much. Got tackled on the two. Then Murrow, instead of sticking it up in there when you're trying to get off your goal, line he tried to bounce it outside which is a definite no-no for a running back and uh got the safety and that those two plays really just snowballed and gave bc the momentum they needed to really give the riders a butt kick and for the rest of the game i was almost appalled at how lopsided the rest of the game that's was. the problem yeah yeah yeah, yeah. jason and red Deer, two guys that kate's played with joseph and durant were not perfect either but how many great cups between them yeah, two. But mm-hmm. Fajardo was in his third season starting. His third? Yeah. Kerry was won a Grey Cup in his fourth or fifth season starting. Darian, fourth or fifth season starting. you going to say Fajardo doesn't have it and give up on him? They always say that until you do win. Wes, yeah. we're out of time, if you can believe. Oh. <laughs> You're That's just getting warmed up. I was about to say, I was, yeah, I was ready to talk about Kerry and Duran. But you bit, can but. stick around. Okay, we'll bring <laughs> Wes back in two segments because we're heading down to Woodbine right after this. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network. We're also live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. That's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC, making back to busy easy. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. 
people donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Just a reminder, everybody, Edmonton is hosting the world this summer. The World Juniors are back from August 9th to the 20th. Purchase your tickets today at HockeyCanada.ca. You can get your tickets for as low as $40 each, and we will see you in Edmonton. Do we have Jim Lawson? All right, let's do it. The CEO of Woodbine Entertainment, Jim Lawson, joins us. A man with a business card and resume that we don't have. We only got two hours. We can't go through it all. Jim's a very accomplished guy. Joins us from Southern Ontario. Jim, thanks for the time. It looks like you guys had a blast last night at Woodbine. What was going on down there? Yeah, hey, Rod, thanks. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, we uh, we opened a new Stella Artois par- a Terrace, a, a 300-seat patio, overlooks the city, overlooks the racetrack, and we've been we've partnered with Labatt's for a long time, and they plunked a whole lot of money into building this terrace, and it is spectacular. We had a fun night to... Uh, the premier came out, and uh, Andre de Grasse was there, and we had a lot of social influencers, and it was a big party all night long, and the, and the races were going on, so it was a spectacular uh, start uh, for this new terrace in Toronto, and it, it'll be popular once it gets going. Well, I'll tell you what, I wondered what was going on, because I thought it was just a standard Thursday night races, but the one guy that you let in the building was Mike Richards <laughs> from Saga 960, and it looks like he made full took full advantage of what you guys had going on. Mike's a regular. It was nice to have him there. And he brought his, he brought his, his cohort, Mr. Bastille along. And, uh, they, they certainly had, uh, consumed some food and drink and had a good time. And, uh, Mike, Mike shows up pretty regularly, and we're happy to have him. He's a big, he's a big supporter and fan of Woodbine. So it's, it was, it was a fun night with, uh, with Mike and Dave. Yeah, and we'll get to the Queen's Plate in a second, but I'm fascinated with this. I mean, you're the former chairman of the Board of Governors of the CFL, pro hockey player, now you're part owner of the Ticats. You guys have clearly decided with this terrace there at Woodbine, we want to make this about entertainment and the party, not just sitting in your seats and watching the races. So can you discuss that initiative? Yeah, listen, I I, I think that, uh, you know, a little bit like my CFL years, um, let's face it, we've got an aging demographic in horse racing. Uh, Canadian Football League has an aging demographic, and uh, that new consumer is more than likely to stay at home if they're interested at all and watch it on their phone or watch highlights. And we've got to find a way to get them out. People like to go out and, and eat and drink and have a fun time, and that's what we need to do to attract the young fans. And you've seen that in, in many CFL stadiums, as you know, to – the uh, the end zone bars and things to try and increase that game day experience and and this is much the same concept but we really have to work hard uh, to get that that young demographic out and and ultimately uh, build some investment in the sport we need new owners we knew we need new people in horse racing and and uh, I think if we can get them up close and personal to the horses and to the jockeys um, they're going to come back and they're going to like it and. Uh, and all the more likely that we'll be able to convert them to, to long-term fans. Well, and to be honest, I'm interested now to talk about the Queen's Plate running Sunday, August 21st, the 163rd running. You worked your butt off to make it happen through the pandemic, and that's what I know as an employee, you want your CEO fighting for your company, and you did that, and you were able to run it, but it wasn't the same, right? Are you back to the normal Queen's Plate this year? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really high demand for tickets, uh, uh, which is great. We're announcing our Entertainment Act on uh, on Monday, which will be an act that's familiar to 
Canadian Football League fans and junior hockey fans across the country. So we're excited about that. And uh, and the food and beverage and the, and the, uh, the dressing up will be a, a highlight of the day. People do love to get dressed up and go outside. And uh, we'll likely have a, a big smattering again of uh, Canadian Football League players, both from the Tiger Cats and the Argonauts. And Henak Moambo was, was, was there last night. I had a good chat with him. And... Uh, It'll, it'll be a fun day. So we're excited to have the Queen's Plate back in, in full form. It'll be on CTV. It'll be a great show. And so I uh, hope you can catch it, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'll be on winging my way back to Florida that day. But I remember, was it just last year or the year before that Brian Williams was hosting the pregame show? Like, it was big. Even though you were at limited capacity. So that's why I asked if you're back to 100% and you are. Like people obviously, you're back in your normal date, right? Everything, does it feel right? Does it feel like you're back now? It, it, yeah, it does. Both during the week and weekends, uh, the crowds are coming back. As, as I said, people like to get out. I think they're, they felt cooped up for too long. And uh, even last night, there was just an excitement in the air of people just being happy to be there getting out, being outside, and uh, and the Queen's Plate is really going to have that feel to it this year. I think we're, we're, we're going at it full blast, and it'll be a fun day. Well, and I should mention, too, for those that don't go, and you can get your tickets if you're watching right now in Southern Ontario on Game Plus TV at woodbine.com, but with the Dark Horse Bets app, you know, we've been talking about it on the show for uh, all week here, and one of the things that you guys have said, it's easy to use, and for me, it was almost too easy to use. I'm, it's fun. It's fun. So I would tell anybody to download it and that to, to feel part of the action. I mean, are you a regular on there? Can I ask you, Jim, Dark Horse? I mean, what do you like about this AI-powered app that you guys have put together? Well, what I what is really neat about it, it, it the world of the world of wagering and particularly party mutual wagering is is that uh, party mutual wagering is is betting against each other and, and what the artificial intelligence does if, if if you can follow this is it finds the gaps in the party mutual wagering so that combinations and horses that are are really under bet the artificial intelligence will not only do the analysis on the quality of horse but will also analyze the, the betting pools and tell you where you should be betting different combinations in order to give yourself the best chance. So it's it's a fascinating piece of artificial intelligence that has algorithms that can figure all that out for you and, and is really a, a neat concept and the winning percentage is extremely high. It uh, it will it will bring you money back. Maybe not always all your money back, but it, it's a big winner and it's really fun as you say, simple to use on your phone. Um, it's uh, it's been a big success for us. Well, you know what to be <laughs> I will put myself in your generation. For you and I, I wouldn't have understood that, but I'm getting into the betting world. But people Brody's age, they're all over it. They would completely understand what you were just talking about with algorithms and the betting. So, yeah, it's cool, and I would encourage anybody to download Dark Horse apps right now. Uh, Jim, it's great to have you back. I should mention with this Tie Cats thing, how is it being a CFL owner? What uh, Enjoying it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's it's fun. I mean, it, the the one thing I I've been working with, you know, I worked with 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 Bob and, and and Scott Mitchell for eight years when I was head of the CFL and uh, and got to know them well. And and really, I came came on board to help Bob uh, look into the into the future for the team. And we were working on different scenarios for ownership including potentially uh, public ownership. And uh, along came Stelco, uh, Alan Kestenbaum, the CEO of Stelco. And so there, there are now four of us, uh, uh, the Stelco Corporation led by Alan Kestenbaum and, and Scott and Bob and I. And so we've got a good group. Uh, we were together last week for the win, and uh, and Scott and I will be there tomorrow night in, uh, in Toronto together. I, Bob's still away, but uh, it, it's fun. I mean, we have... We have a you know a good uh, relationship as an ownership group with uh, with Orlando and 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 I enjoy that. I mean these are good people, as you know. Canadian Football League are great people, and and I I just love being around the team and and but keep my distance that's for sure. Uh, but it, it it's been fun. It would definitely be a different perspective for sure. Well, that's Canada's game of the week: Argos and Ticats in Toronto. So you got a great weekend on the go, Jim. Thanks for this. Glad to be working with you again, and uh, good luck with everything. 
Thanks for having me on. All the best. Have a great weekend. You too. Jim Lawson, Woodbine Entertainment CEO. Wes Cates has hung around. He's got some things he wants to say <laughs> when we come back. And uh, we've got a sports update as well. It is a football Friday, and we're live on the Game Plus television network. Carried all across Ontario on Koji Co. and Rogers Cable. We're also live streaming on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC. Making back to busy easy. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Buffalo days, Buffalo days, well underway. Regina's fair, and get yourself a corn dog. Too bad Cody Fajardo isn't here to enjoy a corn dog. Just before we wrap things up with Wes Cates, as I mentioned, he's got some things he wants to say about quarterbacks. A sports update: the Saskatchewan Rattlers held off an Elam time Edmonton Stingers run and defeated the Stingers 94-91 at SaskTel Center Thursday night in a Canadian Elite Basketball League play-in game. So the Rattlers have moved on to the quarterfinals of the CEBL playoffs. Meanwhile, out east, a killer step back from Cat Barber gave the Guelph Nighthawks a 90-85 road win 
over the Fraser Valley Bandits last night. And that was in another play-in game. So Guelph has moved on. Bandits are done. Toronto Blue Jays will take on the Minnesota Twins for the second of their four-game series tonight. Toronto earned a 9-3 win over Minnesota Thursday. Vladdy and Teo. We're on first-name basis uh, with these guys now because they're winning. They both homered in the victory for the Jays. This sports update for Edo Japan with more than 160 restaurants nationwide. Edo Japan is proud to be Canadian-owned and operated for more than 40 years. So, listen, Wes has been sitting here very patiently and quietly. <laughs> Because you said no, you had so, some, yeah, yeah. yeah, you had some thoughts. I feel thoughts. like it's almost past the moment, but no, we, we're, we're not. We're, we're comparing Cody for Jardo. That's for those to, that just tuned in. Hang yeah, on, because yeah, okay, Nick Lewis yeah. just walked in the door. Yeah. What up, so Nick? he was picking out everything, that, everything that's wrong with Fajardo. And I said, Durant and Joseph, am I wrong, weren't perfect? No, they weren't. But they're, but you look at the – you compare the quarterbacks. Okay, Durant and Cody are similar size, but I still think Durant was a little stockier and way more accurate and precise – and then as far as Kerry Joseph, no question the better athlete, could run better, had a way bigger arm. And just really, I'm, I haven't been in the locker room with Cody, but I've never seen a quarterback lead a team like Corey, uh, Kerry Joseph did that year. I was, I was really impressed. And, and we can even throw Hank Henry Burris back in there. Because you played with him, yeah. Because I played with him. Like, he's probably the most overall talented quarterback I've ever played with as far as smarts arm and uh, athletic ability and he was tall so we could see over the line Cody doesn't really have any of that to a elevated extent he's tough he can run a little bit but I don't see him really out running out running the rush like that I don't know it's just uh, he's great he's got good skills but nothing that kind of sets him apart in any way this I don't miss hardly any yeah. of my prior life but this is what I wish I could do and Nick's over there smiling like a butcher's dog he can't <laughs> wait to weigh in on this I'd like to put Fajardo and Hank back to back and see who's taller because Fajardo's six two I don't think he's any shorter he? than Hank is he? he's a big man and right. Henry's getting old he might be shrinking now too <laughs> let's not forget how about that? Yeah, Nick played with Hank for a while, so Nick can tell you. Yeah, Nick can. I only had one year with both of those guys. It was, yeah, it was a good year. I got, I got, I was the young rookie that had to do everything, so I got picked on a lot. But they know I, I helped the team win tons. <laughs> the <laughs> West Cates, the guy refers to the West Cates era. Hey, it was In, a great era. It was a great a lot era. Of winning. He's Sold the only guy stadium. that refers to it as the West Cates era. But hey, is it wilder now? In this town for like the fandom, or does it just seem that way to me? Then when, the, when you were playing, I think the stadium helps it seem better, but it was way wilder when I, I came into like five, four or five straight games of streakers and just pandemonium in the fan, like in the stands, like the things that were happening when I was playing, you can't even do now, or you get kicked out for life. So, it name was way, one, way better. Name one. What do you mean? Like, what, what, what was happening? I'm talking about like streakers, like literally. Oh, I thought you meant in the game, oh, like no. um, well, yeah, Rob that, Murphy I, choking John Chick. Or I actually something like got that. a concussion and got back into a game. It was with Big Win. We were in the Banjo Bowl and we came back and won with yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was an interesting one. But yeah, there's a lot of things that are. I guess rules are getting better. Guys were definitely tougher. These guys I see getting helped off the field and coming back in and 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 finishing the game. I'm like, I never, I never got injured. And had to get helped off the field. I like figured out I was injured and walked myself. You played the great cup on a broken foot. Let's yeah, be these honest. guys are these guys are soft. Man. I, I give him a hard time, <laughs> but I love him, and he is uh, one of the all-time greats. Wes, thanks for coming in. Hey, it was my pleasure. Always the have fun. Wes Case, Nick Lewis, next hour, and a big viewer takeover as we talk CFL and a whole lot more. Stick around for this after this break here on Game Plus TV. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. 
work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. you got to be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Good morning, Rod Squad. Maybe tomorrow I'll tell you guys about the big game that I went to in San Antonio with Snoop Dogg. Remember that one, Clark? The Lakers and Spurs? Snoop Dogg and I went, Bob. How about that? Snoop Dogg was sitting courtside. I was up in the nosebleeds, but we were in the arena at the same time. We were, I was there with him. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's the second seating, as I like to say, the RP Show Football Friday for Flame Tech, your industry leader in combustion services. We're uh, one day into week nine in the CFL. The NFL kicked off last night, and our next guest is a true Hall of Famer, Canadian. Oh, I've got so much to get to with you, Nick. <laughs> Good to see you. Good, Good to that see mic you as working, well. man. Wes Cates broke it. Yeah, Wes over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, University uh, of Pennsylvania, or was it Cal University Penn. of California in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Yes, 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 yes. He no made beaches. that school what it is today. <laughs> Him and uh, Jeff Knox, two pretty good ballers come out of there. Yeah, it is. Uh, again, Hall of Famer, and you can talk about all these things, Nick. This guy is averse in a lot of topics. Uh, the breaking news today, Dave Dickinson will not coach the Calgary Stampeders at Ottawa tonight. He's been ruled out. Due to, I guess, COVID protocol, I haven't seen the official release or statement or so forth, but Mark Killam will.
coach his very first CFL game tonight for the Calgary Stampeders, their special teams coordinator. And that is our poll question for Capital Automobile Universal Collision Center. Today, can the Calgary Stampeders win without Dave Dickinson on the sidelines? Now, remember, they're at Ottawa. So, yeah, of course they can beat him without uh, Dave Dickinson, but it'll be odd. And John Huffnagel is going to be on the sidelines as well, coming out of the press box to help out. So we'll get to all the comments and everything. From the viewers, everybody's excited to talk to Nick, but nobody's more excited than me. I spent 17 weeks in Calgary, Nick. I didn't realize that's your town. Oh, man, it's I your town. Place. I love that place. That's it a, loves you. I, I, I'm actually headed back um, on Sunday. I'll be there all week. Um, have a charity event um, there Monday and then another charity event on Thursday. I what mean, are Friday. They? What are they? Um, Legends for Learners uh, on Monday at the Valley Ridge Golf Course. I'll be a part of that. And then on Friday, we're going to uh, the Prolific Sports House and playing basketball uh, for child and adolescent mental health for the Alberta Hospital. Good for you, man. So, yeah, I, I get back. I do quite a bit there in Calgary and just love being in town. And uh, just two weeks ago, I was there for kids play, uh, getting South Asian kids into uh, more into sports. And then I did um, the Alberta Selects football camp. So, yeah. You're a busy guy. It's always good to get back. Well, um, Jason and Red Deer writing in. Hey, Nick, great seeing you at the Selects camp in Calgary a couple of weeks ago. Thanks for signing my football. Jack in Vulcan, Alberta says, nasty. Happy birthday. He's talking about Sheldon Napastic. It's Sheldon Nasty Napastic's birthday today. <laughs> oh, man. Happy birthday, Sheldon. Great player, great all-around guy, and friend of the RP show. And, hey, Nick Lewis, goat. That's from Jack Fulton. And we're talking about Sask quarterbacks. And I say this with all respect to the guy that wrote it in. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, Lancaster was great. Austin was really good. Durant was good. That's the rider quarterback, Mount Rushmore, no doubt. Well, for one, you need four, Jeff. Just keep your rider opinions to yourself. You're a Stamps fan. <laughs> We've won four great cups, so it's Lancaster, Austin, Joseph, and Darian. That's the Mount Rushmore. Did you mention them all? I don't think you did. No, you didn't. So that's the Mount Rushmore. And I guess we'll jump right into it. They're down on Cody Fajardo in this town, and it bothers me. Where are you on the Fajardo debate? I mean, I'll tell you two years ago. Uh, I can't know, remember. I get opinions it, from it's everybody. One of those, it's one of those things where Cody's a, I, I feel like Cody's a really good leader. Like, you see him communicate well with the guys, do those things. But his skill set is very limited. And when you get on a roll and things are connecting, the defense is creating turnovers, you're having short fields, it doesn't come into play that much. And I believe in, in 2019, when he took over, there was just the defense was playing lights out. There was a lot of short fields, uh, things like that. And then I just never thought he was going to be the guy. Right? He's a He's a – I don't even. I wouldn't even call him great like West did. He's he's a good quarterback, and when I when when pro athletes compare good, bad, great, we're comparing them to other pros. We're not saying that he's a bad quarterback compared to college quarterbacks or high school quarterbacks. Like he's still better than you at home. I promise you that. But <laughs> we're just saying that compared to other pro quarterbacks, he's very limited in his skill set, and I think a lot of that he was able to make up for in being a great leader, getting his team ready to play, having them play above themselves at times. Um, but, you know, I always look back as I don't know if Moss and Cody are a perfect fit because Moss played uh, – Moss was the best OC or his best self when he had Hank and um, Mike Riley, two guys that had arms to throw the ball down the field. He struggled with Trevor Harris, who didn't throw the ball down the field. He struggles with Fajardo because he didn't throw the ball down the field. So I think that's really one of the biggest things. Well, I'll tell you something. Um, as I mentioned, 17 weeks in Calgary coming back into the Ryder Nation, uh, it's a lot. And here's my observations from Calgary, Nick, that I think you'll agree in. The Stamps have a far bigger brand there than I thought. You see that Stamps logo a lot of places. Ball caps, golf shirts, bumper stickers. But it's still flames here, Stamps here. That's a fact, right? That's all they're yeah. talking about is the Flames. But the Stamps are still a bigger deal than I thought. But then you come here, and it's all riders all the time. And I'm getting to a point. I've heard 87 million different opinions on what's wrong with the riders in the last five days. I'm losing my mind. I can't keep straight. And I said to Jim Hobson yesterday, he was here, I said, how did you deal with that? 
And he goes, I embraced it. I never ran away from it. He's the president of the team. Um, it's a lot. Like, you, do these fans know what's wrong? Because I'm hearing no. everything's wrong. No, I, I mean, I think you just have to accept you're the fourth best team in the league. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? Because we know on any day any team can win a playoff game. Uh, being the fourth best team in the league where, one, you look at Winnipeg, who's beating everybody, yep. they're 9-0. BC, Calgary, and then Sask. Sask. But what do they all have in common? Those are the best four defenses in the ah. league. Those are the, by far the four best defenses in the league. I mean, you can't say Bo's been playing great this year. You can't say that, really, I wouldn't even say Zach does well. Um, Wes and I think he's the best player in the league, correct? He's accurate. Zach well, is very he, accurate. Last night he was very, very accurate. He's very accurate, yeah. right? And when he gets out of the pocket, he makes – he's very accurate out of the pocket, which a lot of quarterbacks struggle with. So, Zach, when he gets out of the pocket, extending the play, being able to make the throw uh, to extend drives is very crucial for them. But also their defense is just short field after short field. They don't – they're never going to just give up a bunch of points where you have to come back. Like if Zach was down by 17 points – is Zach going to bring them back? I don't know. But when you can play from ahead and he can just say a punt's a great offensive play, he's going to be successful. And, and I think the BC has to do the same thing with, with their quarterback. They have to be in games. You don't want him playing from behind, play within yourself, and be able to go out there and execute. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Sass being the fourth best team in the league. <laughs> But these fans want to be number one, and it's eating them alive that Winnipeg is. And uh, that's a deeper and another conversation as to why the Riders aren't anymore and Winnipeg is. Craig Campbell's watching from the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, and he says, who's the better Lewis, Nick, Eugene, or Leo? One's well, a, I've, I've never seen Leo play. I, I, you right. know, I heard some great things about him. I tell you what, I was I was with Gino in uh, Montreal my last year, and man, that's a that's a talent. But he's got the second best hands to me, baby. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, there's Hall of Famer for a reason. Which, incidentally, how was the induction? It was good. It was good. I had a lot of fun. Uh, it was 18 of us in my family that went down, and uh, family and friends, and we went to Toronto, hung out for one night, then went to Hamilton, and. Enjoyed the festivities, man. It's it's always for me to sit down one with like Mike Walker, great and guy. To sit down, you know, haven't seen Will Johnson in a long time and Big Chill and uh, see Hank. I I honestly haven't talked to Hank since the Grey Cup in Ottawa. Like what is twenty seventeen? That was the last time me and Hank talked. You need to DM on Instagram more. That's how I talk to him. Yeah, so <laughs> to be able to sit down and just have conversations and just enjoy where we are today yeah, in that's our lives. Yeah, that's talking. Face to face. Doing things like same. that. It was, uh, it was really good seeing Nicole and the kids and, and everyone and just be proud of him. But to hear the stories of the, of the other it's guys. The greatest, and and then to see guys that have waited 20, 30 years or 40 years and to get in and, you know, RIP Doug Mitchell, man. I, I definitely enjoyed – his name I was comes like, up what's up, brother? Yeah. And he, he loved it. And, you know, just being able to hang with Doug, and I was supposed to go see him next time I was in Calgary. And it was just crazy. So, as, yeah. Did you have a sign or sense that your mom was there? Yes. The wind was blowing incredibly hard. And I just got that sense that, that she was a, uh, a presence there. And, but it was uh, ultimately they told me I had four minutes. I think I did 18. No! You were yeah. that guy. How about that? Was you that Schultz guy. it? I, once Huff was up there for 10 plus, I said, I'm going all in. I, yeah. I actually did an impromptu five minutes, and then I said, okay, now I'm going to start my speech. So, Good for you. Well, cool. i got to be honest. I, um, I've been to so many of those Hall of Fame inductions, and you just said it. The stories are unbelievable. And if you actually listen to the inductees and what they're saying, it's like a how-to book for life to overcome adversity. Everybody has it. Yeah. You know, in their life, you overcame it. All those guys overcame it and got into the Hall of Fame. I love, love it. And it just burns my ass that TSN or the CFL don't do a far bigger deal of it. Like, for instance, when Jim Hobson went into the Hall of Fame, I said, can you send me the video of it, Jim? I can't make it, but I'd like to see your speech. He sends me a, face, a Facebook video of his kid took. I'm like, this isn't right. They're, I'm sorry. 
Nobody but, in Hamilton knew what was going on. That too. There was like nothing to promote it. There was <laughs> nothing to really um, do anything around it. But, you know, it's just one of those things. And, I mean, I've seen a couple of the guys and um, uh, Wilson, Don Wilson. That's a big goes great. And yeah. I, was, I looked at Don Wilson and I said, instantly I got competitive and I said, man, I wish I could have seen you on the field. Because that's oh, where you, that's where you stud, rank man. yourself, he right? Was a you want to play the best so that you can see where you rank up. And, and I was always enjoyed that. He's like, yeah, we'd have some great battles in, in Orlando Steinhauer, who I got to play with at the end of his career the last couple of years. So, no, it was great. Great times. I tell you what, you know, that's the one thing. I'm always the fish swimming upstream, and you're a little that way yourself. We just think and look at things a little differently. And like Rogers Center, we love Rogers Center, right, Wes? How could you not as rider people? Won Grey Cups there. And you walk into that place, and you look up at those banners, those Argo numbers. Don Wilson's was up there. Obviously, Flutie, Paul Masati, some real awesome Argo greats. And Don yeah. Wilson was one of them. And like at BMO, I don't even remember seeing any Argo banners in there. Like, that was a great home for the Argos, I thought. Yeah, and, you know, for a lot of it, it's BMO's kind of like Montreal and McGill. Like, yeah. you set up on that day of the game, and then you tear down, so... It's you really home. don't, yeah. You really don't have anything to to do, and there's a lot of stadiums like that. I mean, yeah, it's it's very unfortunate that uh, there aren't CFL built stadiums for CFL teams, and maybe in the future. Uh, hey, my cousin Christine in Medicine Hat is watching, and she says, "I'm not worried about my riders until they lose to Edmonton." Uh, I haven't even looked at the schedule. I don't know when they've got it coming up. Ja, the Elks, Jason and Red Deer. Good news, Ryder fans. The Riders are guaranteed to not lose this week. <laughs> That's, hey? Play the out of the bye next week? Yeah. Oh, up there. Yeah. I'm going to be there. I might actually go to it. They I'm get not a little sure. bit better. Hell yes. yes. Well, um, so to our viewers, the Ryder fans, I'm going to tell you something. You get enough coverage, okay? We're going to talk about the other teams. That's part of the reason why I think that our show has been very popular in Alberta. Stamps and Elks aren't getting a lot of coverage there. So when we roll in and talk CFL, the fans love it because they're not getting it anywhere else. Yep. Winnipeg's different story. They get a lot of coverage. But I'll put to you what I put to West last hour. Bombers 18-0. They're 9-0. They're halfway there. Could it happen? I think the only challenge they'll have is BC. Uh, the next time they play the Stamps, the Stamps play, I believe, in Toronto or Montreal or Hamilton. And then they play in Winnipeg five days later. So – Back-to-back -back road games five days apart, you're almost 100% chance to lose that game. And then it being Winnipeg in Winnipeg is going to be tough, right? Because yeah. you play five days before that. And I don't know, maybe Winnipeg has a week uh, before that game. So preparation plays a key in well, all those games. It's the CFL. And every, actually every yeah. league is the same. Just imagine this. Imagine they're 17-0. They've got everything locked up. And they're coming home in a meaningless game, and you're Mike O'Shea going, oh, i got to win one game to be 18-0, but this game means nothing. Do you go out to win it, or do you rest everybody? Remember what Kent did in 07? He rested guys at home. We could have won our 13th game, sat Kerry down, and Kerry was mad. Players, of course, want to play, but could you imagine that scenario? That could happen. I could. I could. Yeah. I mean, 2013, when the Riders won the Grey Cup, um, the last game of the season we played B.C., uh, Mark Wade McDaniel went down that game. Um, Micah Johnson went down. Uh, uh, DeMonte Bolden went down. So we had, I think, five starters got injured that game. Uh, that was the year I broke my leg, so I was out. But it was just one of those things where we beat them the week before, and then we go into the Western Final, and they have 200 more yards rushing than they did in the in Week 17. So understanding all those factors, I mean, you don't want to sacrifice a – a championship just to go 18 and 0. Absolutely not. But so we're all saying no. That would be a pretty good poll question. Uh, can the Winnipeg, can you see the Winnipeg Blue Bombers going 18 and 0? It's a universal no from all three of us. It's, it's never before happened. It'd be very hard to do. But but what is our actual poll question? And we'll flash it again before we break. Is for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Can the Calgary Stampeders win tonight? Without Dave Dickinson, he's in COVID protocol. Mark Killam will be running the show on the sidelines at TD Play Stadium in Ottawa. We'll talk about that game with Nick and the rest of the Week 9 games in the CFL. And we haven't even talked NFL yet. 
So stick around. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday. Flame Tech is your industry leader in combustion services. We'll be right back on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. I Download Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got to love the mechanical bull. I used to have a rule. If I saw one, I'd ride it. That rule is now passed. But uh, you still can down at Queen City X, or as we like to call it, Buffalo Days. I haven't even opened up the text line yet, and I should. A couple things that I need to uh, mention. The 163rd running of the Queen's Plate is taking place Sunday, August 21st. A day full of the best Canadian thoroughbred racing. Great fashion, amazing food, and loads of fun. Get your tickets today at woodbine.com or play along on Woodbine's Dark Horse betting app. It's available for Android and Apple devices. And last hour, we had Jim Lawson with us, the CEO of Woodbine Entertainment. Uh, they're running races every Thursday night. You download that app. You can wager on races every week. Uh, what else do we have here? World Juniors. Edmonton is hosting the world this summer. We're going to pick two lucky winners today. This you have, uh, what, 
40 minutes to enter this week's draw. Text World Juniors in all caps to 902 518 3033 right now, and we'll be picking two names today randomly, and you get to pick the games that you want to attend in the round robin at the World Juniors. They are August 9th to the 20th. Purchase your tickets today at hockeycanada.ca. They begin at just $40. So um, there's a lot to talk about with Nick Lewis here, the Hall of Famer. We should talk about Dave Dickinson not coaching tonight. I look at my bell here, my stamps bell, because of COVID protocol. Well, none of us can believe it's still a thing, but it is. So, yeah, what do you think about Killam coaching for the first time tonight? I think it'd be great. You know, Mark, you know, I've seen him since 2006 when he was our strength and conditioning coach and then to work his way up uh, to becoming one of the best special team coaches in the CFL. Uh, he's respected from all the guys in the locker room. He's a good positive guy to be around yeah. and just talk to. Uh, so he relates, man. So that's, that's good. I, I don't think they'll have a drop off there. But with Dave calling plays and you say Huff is coming back to the sideline, is Huff coming back? <laughs> Forever? <laughs> yeah. Well, who's going to call plays? Kellum can't. I think Huff will. If Or Mark could do it with Huff in his ear. What about Mark Mueller? Could do it with Huff in his ear. Mark Mueller. They meant Mark Killam would call plays. No, no, Mark Mueller. Yeah. So it'd be he would have the earpiece in and Huff would just tell him what to call. <laughs> and nobody would know the difference. I mean, we, we'll see. Uh, one... Every time I see Huff, he's so well prepared. He stays four, five, six weeks ahead. He breaks down every team. He understands what's going on in that organization. He understands all the teams that they play against. So it's not far-fetched to think that Huff couldn't come and call a game. Saw him in the press box in Edmonton at a game earlier this summer. It's very clear that he's very much got his finger on the pulse. He's not sitting there eating caviar and shrimp cocktail in the press box oh no he's working he's working and he will always <laughs> be working if you want to know the success of the calgary stampeders it begins with j and ends with h um so that's the two we talked about winnipeg and montreal last night winnipeg 135 20 calgary wait a minute you're a twitter guy how much time do you spend on twitter uh not much anymore i've been on there lately because you have? You, but you know what I actually talk worse about the Stamps and Alouettes than any other team <laughs> just because I uphold them to a different standard. And Your former teams. Yeah. Right. So speaking of alumni, Doug Brown tweeting last night, whoa, are the Alouettes ever undisciplined? Milt Stiegel, same thing. And I'm thinking, how many people are understanding these are Kahari Jones' old teammates? I said the same thing. You and I'm a Kahari Jones Twitter. teammate. Yeah, right. No, I put it on Twitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's three guys now that played with Kahari. What kind of a mess is going down in Montreal? And again, that's your former team, so that must hurt you. You know, it's just really crazy when you see someone, like I was there in the turmoil and understanding we didn't make the playoffs. They hadn't made the playoffs since 2013. Kahari comes in and makes the playoffs, right? When he takes over, makes the playoffs the next year after that. And then the owner puts a bullseye on his head before the first game this year. Yeah. And I even tweeted that last night. said, how do you put a bullseye on Kahari's head before game one? And now it's crickets. When you <laughs> clearly you. should have won those first two games, right? You come off a of bye week. You should have won the first two games. It's a, a, over 80% chance to win when you change head coaches in the first game. And they don't. And they didn't. And the only team they beat was Ottawa. They're one and three. And now they're looking at going and doing, like, come on, man. Just because it's the East and you say, okay, well, we only had to win six games to get in. But let's call it what it is. They're no better. They're no more disciplined. And I don't hear anything out of that owner's chair right now. It's only crickets. But when Kahari was the head coach, it seemed like something was going wrong. I'm with you. And the thing is, Eddie Steele, and listen, you understand social media isn't real life. Newsflash, it's not <laughs> real life. But Eddie Steele, our good friend, calling out Gary Stern on Twitter this morning or last night saying, why did you fire Kahari? What's the, what's the real reason? That's from Eddie. So I'm just thinking, who didn't see this coming? Like Gary Stern says, he's watching the Grey Cup going, it would be cool to own a team. I said to my buddy Sid, let's own a team. Gary's swimming in the deep end right now without water wings. 
I mean, the you first thing I mean? they did was get rid of the cheerleaders. Then they brought them back because of that whole... Public pressure. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, we all know that Montreal wants a French head coach. Mm -hmm. So they have one. And now they have one, but you're getting the same results. The French people want to win. That mm -hmm. fan base wants to win over anything. Um, so I just, I just don't understand the logic in it, making the playoffs two years in a row. Uh, your starting quarterback goes down. The best player on your offense goes down, and Williams stand back the first game of the year. Like, Baron Miles is, you know, coming into D coordinator. Like, come on, man. Like, let's, let's call it what it is. Um, they wanted to get rid of people. And I think the play for Danny Machocha was always to be the head coach. And I personally believe, you know, him and Thorpe are good friends. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to make Thorpe the head coach next year. Yeah. Well, all I'm all I'm saying is sitting here as a longtime CFL guy. And Gary Stern's come on this show. It seems to be he seems to be a really great guy. It's not a toy. These are people's lives. You know what I'm saying? This is fun and games. And he's kind of acted like it's fun and games. All the owners do. Right? It's people's lives. And so you're saying it. You're saying it. it's crickets over there. I think he's realized this ain't a toy. It's a pro football team. That's it. And if you don't respect your, you don't respect your players, you don't respect your coaches or organization, you know, it could, it could become a real bad situation because when, when, I, when you're a player, you look at all those things. How do players get treated by the team? How is the owner? How are all these things when I'm going to play somewhere? So then you become a place that you have to overpay everybody to go play there. People go to Calgary because they understand they're going to win. I'm going to have a chance to win. I'm in a stable and great organization. People don't go to certain places. Edmonton had to pay Kenny Lawler 300000 to get him to Edmonton. Like, let's think about that. And, yeah, so. Uh, I love it. Um, from our viewers, I'm sorry, there's a lot of great <laughs> – on the French speaking, Jeff Kabilis in Winnipeg says, Don Matthews spoke French. Can we say some French? Um, puh. Oh, I was there. I know. Just enough. I hear it from all, I'd hear it from all the people. Like the some people get mad if you don't speak French. <laughs> and it's like uh but you know what it is it, it, it is the undertone of Montreal. Uh but you know, you own the team, they're in the league. But you yeah. You said it yourself. They'd rather win. It would be nice if he spoke French. 100%. But they'd rather win. That's it. So Don Matthews spoke just enough. That's all I'll say. Other games. This was a Saturday doubleheader. I, we're all salivating to get your take on these. Canada's game of the week, Hamilton at Toronto. Last I looked, Argo's favored by two at betregal.ca, and people are scoffing that, saying Hamilton's going to go in there and speedboat them. What do you think? Toronto's good. I wouldn't put the Argos by two because Boris Beattie would probably miss two or three field goals. What's happening with him? The same thing always happens to him. He's mentally weak. He's never prepared to the level that he needs to prepare to. Uh, he relies on his leg strength, and um, somebody's got to push him. I mean, I used to have the conversation with him all the time in Montreal. It's like, dude, when are you going to become the person you should be? Like, find greatness. You go out here and you're just lackadaisical, and then you miss one, and you mm. No, it's not that. Like, you understand, you've lost a game this year. and At least one. Yeah. And yeah. then you put a team in bad situations. So, um, mm. he's got to step up. And, you know, they're, those teams like that, they tend to get better. Like, Edmonton's going to continue to get better. Toronto's going to continue to get better. But also Hamilton. And I think with Matt Schiltz and um, Dane Evans right now, they, they're finding a good little balance of how to utilize both. And it's creating some unique problems for the defense because you have to prepare for everything. So you're preparing for two different people, and that's very hard for a lot of defenses. See you go along with Hamilton's going to go in there and win. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be tough. I think that's always a tough matchup to, to know who's going to win. But um, I definitely think they have a, a fighting chance to go win. Then the later game, 
the whopping story on this to me is the point spread. Uh, Edmonton at BC and Bet Regal has the Lions favored by ten and a half at home. The BC Lions favored by ten and a half over Chris Jones and the Edmonton Elks. I got to watch this game because Duran's playing. Well, frankly, if he's not playing, I'm not interested in watching most times. I just love Duran. What do you yeah. think about this game? Um, I could definitely see BC winning, but uh, I, it goes back to. Their youth without Brian Burnham, they're they're very young, and they don't always play at that level. And you've seen it in the SAS game a couple weeks ago. They just don't always play at the level they should be playing at. The defense does. The offense is very inconsistent. Uh, if they hit big plays, they usually score. If they don't hit a lot of big plays, they t- they they struggle to score points. So that's why they put up. That's why the quarterback throws for so many yards because it's mostly big plays. He'll have four or five big plays in a game. It's, it's going to put him at 150, 200 yards, and then from there it's just a lot of struggles. So understanding um, what they're doing, I, I, I honestly think they can win that game by 10-plus. Wow, hey. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be hard, though. I mean, anytime you go into professional sports, it's hard to win by double digits, especially when you're favored by double digits and you're supposed to win. Yeah, I don't think I got into this much. When we come back, we got a lot of questions from the viewers. I just open it up, and it's like, whoa. So I'll read those next segment. But here, you mentioned double digits. Here's my thinking. Riders, i got to ask your take on this. We talked about Fajardo enough, but they were up 17-4, second quarter on BC, and I actually thought they were going to lock it down and win the game, and they didn't. My point being, it's hard to move the ball enough. It's harder to score points. You got up by 13, lock it down. And they didn't. Um, what is with this Ryder team right now? Can they turn this around? They're on a three-game losing streak. I was sitting beside Andrew Green and, uh, at the game, and I told Andrew, I said, well, let's, when they got the ball back right before the end of the half and they, were dry, and they had a couple plays and had to punt it, I said, if BC scores a touchdown here, they'll win this game. I understood that the Riders scored off of – uh, strip sack by Charleston. They had some other uh, penalties that allowed them to get into the end zones. So they were already struggling. And just offensively, I didn't think they would be able to put up enough points to beat BC. Uh, getting the 17-4 to lead, I thought that going into halftime with the momentum, if the defense could keep playing at that level, maybe create one more turnover, they could ice the game in the second half. But when they gave up that touchdown and it became a one-score game, I was like, that's it, ball game. A mental thing. <laughs> totally mental. Hey. Okay, we'll come back with viewer takeover. We'll get into it early for Taco Time and uh, a sports update. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio streaming now at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM-certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold, hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big, and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC. Making back to busy easy. 
The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show. The Rod Peterson Show. Queen City X, the place to be. Formerly Buffalo Days. Kids having a great time down there at Exhibition Park. It's a football Friday here just ahead of more with Nick Lewis's sports update. Whit Merrifield says he is vaccinated for COVID-19 and will be cleared to play for Toronto when the Blue Jays return to Canada. Merrifield was acquired in a trade with Kansas City on Tuesday for two minor leaguers. The two-time All-Star was in the starting lineup in center field for his first game with his new team. That's the Jays at Minnesota. And the Jays won 9-3. Merrifield was among 10 players on the Royals who were unvaccinated last month, preventing him from going to Toronto. Calgary Flames and recently acquired forward Jonathan Huberdeau have agreed to an $84 million eight-year contract extension. The 29-year-old Huberdeau came to Calgary from the Florida Panthers, as we know, along with Mackenzie Wieger, Cole Schwent, and a 2025 conditional first-round pick in exchange for Matthew Kachuk. Edmonton is hosting the world this summer. The World Juniors back August 9th to the 20th. Purchase your tickets today at hockeycanada.ca. They start for as low as $40. And we'll see you up there beginning Monday. We'll be broadcasting for two weeks from Edmonton and the World Juniors. And bring the thrill of the track to your fingertips with Woodbine's Dark Horse Bets app. It's AI-powered <laughs> insights and strategies help you make smarter bets straight out of the gate. Feel the excitement of live-streamed horse races wherever you go. Download the app for free at PlayDarkHorse.com, available for Android and Apple devices. Jason in Red Deer uh, wrote in some time ago and said, hey, we haven't talked yet about the NFL preseason game Tuesday night. And Jason, you're a regular here. You're a P1. You should know coffee starts at 10 Mountain <laughs> AM. We talked about it already, but I'm willing to talk about it again. The Vegas Raiders gave coach Josh McDaniels a successful homecoming in his debut on their sideline. Josh Jacobs, rookie Zamir White, and Austin Walter ran well on a rain-soaked field in Canton, Ohio. The Raiders spanked Jacksonville 27-11 to in the Hall of Fame game, which spoiled the debut of Jags head coach Doug Peterson. And I'll spend a minute on that. Derek Carr didn't play for the Raiders. Devontae Adams didn't play for the Raiders. Trevor Lawrence didn't play for the Jags. Nick Lewis loves talking some NFL. Did you catch any of the game last night? Because I couldn't find it. No, I didn't watch any of it. Um, I was watching the Bombers and Alouettes game. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it was just, one, I, I was way more entertaining than I thought it would be. Uh, shout out Tyson Philpot, you know what I'm saying? Whoa. Like, doing his thing. But NFL-wise, man, and then when you – I seen Josh Jacobs had some carries. I was very surprised that he played in the game. So – um, I just see the mentality there, man. It's that division. The best in football. 
the best in a long time. Like just thinking about the Chargers being young and having a quarterback and the Raiders now getting Devontae Adams and having a quarterback, even though he calls him a Hall of Famer. But <laughs> um, <laughs> the Chiefs having a, a quarterback and now Denver getting Russell Wilson. So that's going to be some exciting football. The NFC West was pretty exciting last year and for the last couple of years. Yeah. But it's been supplanted by the AFC West. But you are a fan of America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. And Jerry spoke last week in Oxnard. Did you follow that whole scenario there? No, man. I haven't followed much of the Cowboys. I'm, you know what, Ron? <laughs> I'm like this. He's, ta- he's tapering expectations. He's trying to, like... Dak is not like I'm I'm I tried last year. I said I'm all in on Dak. But then it's just so frustrating to watch him constantly miss open receivers, throw the ball behind mm-hmm. them, like no catch and run balls. They're diving for balls that they should be able to catch and run and um yeah, we'll see what happens. I I'm big on the defense, Micah Parsons and and what they're doing there. It's a game changer. Uh but I definitely believe if you want Dak to be the quarterback you need somebody like Sean Payton to come in and be innovative in the offense. We're already talking about it. Right? right? Because he did look what look what he did with um Hill in New Orleans. Like they won games with a guy they that they won shouldn't have won games. Games. With. Yeah. And I and I would we'd all agree that Dak is better than Taysom Hill. <laughs> I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey. Pardon us as we have a little Dallas Cowboys discussion. So Jarrah. <laughs> Spoke to the media last week, and it's entertaining as always, right? And he said, uh, we got McCarthy back for year three in a five-year deal. And he goes, and I got options. I got options. I don't need to have them, but I'm bringing them back because I don't have time to have a bad time. And the media all broke out laughing. And Jerry's like, I don't see what's funny. You get what he's saying. He's like, he goes, I'm going to die. He goes, I'm going to be 79 soon. I need to win a Super Bowl. You're not going to do it with Mike McCarthy. And we had the voice of the Cowboys on, Brad Sham. Yeah. And he goes, tremendous amount of pressure on... Kellen Moore, obviously, and Mike McCarthy. And I just said, how many brain farts need to happen before they make a change? I'm talking about the timing and the end of the playoff game. Like, Nick, who pays for that? Nobody paid for it. Nobody. Nobody. And it was, to me, there's something underlying that the reason they kept McCarthy. There's there's an underlying reason. It's not money. It can't be money. It can't be money. Jerry will spend money. I mean, the Cowboys hadn't won a Super Bowl in the salary cap era. When he was able to go and outspin San Fran for Dion and Charles Haley and Ken Norton and all them, like we were a competitive team. But to really go in and say, here's a salary cap, you can't just pay everybody you want, like build a team, that's where they struggle. Most people get mad like, oh, Jerry is a GM. Jerry did not made a decision in Dallas besides who's the head coach is in a long time. His son, Steven, runs that team as far as GM-wise. Because if, if Jerry ran it, we'd have had Menzel. We'd have had other players, right? So Jerry drafted a quarterback in round one every year. 100% because yeah. Jerry always <laughs> – Jerry missed out on Randy Moss, and he said he'll never miss out again. And that's why we, we get some of those players, and we try to maintain their, their saneness in, in Dallas. But um, it's one of those things, man. Being a Cowboys fan is fun. It's exciting, but – um, I'm, I like to call myself a realist, right? And I understand if we can make the playoffs, beat the, beat the Redskins, Giants, and Eagles, we're good. Sure. It should win the division, which we did last year. Yeah, that's it. Um, uh, Texas is a great football state, but when's the last time you were in Florida? Florida, it's been a minute. Uh, it's been a minute. Florida. There's yeah. a lot of fun things going on. The reason I say that is you've got to come down there, Nick, because what's going on with the Dolphins – blow your mind you know it's not all good really well no what's good is mike mcdaniel they love him he hasn't coached a game yet though you got tyreek hill in there to help out tua but i don't think they're ever going to win because their owner appears to be an idiot yeah it starts at the top it does it does and when you make start making decisions like they're making and and doing things uh, filters onto the field does it not 100%. 100%. Yeah. Like, and, and all that stuff trickles down into the product, right? If anybody feels like the owner is a certain type of way or, you know, you, you start off with the with stuff that came out four or five months ago uh, asking someone to lose and 
you know, I've personally seen, been in meetings and seen things where not asking somebody to lose, but just saying, you know, it doesn't matter about winning. Uh, it just matters about being competitive. We'll win next year or we'll win later. We need this pick or we want this player or we want. So they try to get in a situation. But, um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see where they are as an organization. Uh, but it seems like there's a big buzz around the team right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But they're always – they talk about them every day, all day. But whether they're going to be good or not, who knows – Uh, Craig Smith, our director of scouting watches, he says, love Texas football. Hey, Texas, Florida, again, it's like pizza, ice cream. They're both great. Very hard to pick what's better. (laughs) And how blessed are we to be able to go to both and watch football? Uh, We'll be back. No, Jeff Kibelis watching in Winnipeg says, the RP Cowboys show. I'm up How for that, Nick. How about you? 100%. Your source for Hell Dallas yes. Cowboys news and information analysis, the RP Show. I'd do it in a heartbeat. We should have our own Cowboys podcast. Because God knows there's not enough of those out there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, We'll be right back with uh, Overtime. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday on the Game Plus TV network. YouTube Live, and you can always catch the podcast wherever the best podcasts are found, including Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, Google, and Spotify. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Great Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. The summer of hockey in Alberta continues. And the future of Team Canada is bright. The 2022 World Juniors return to Edmonton August 9th to 20th. Single game tickets available from $40. Buy now at HockeyCanada.ca. 
Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Overtime is a proud presentation of the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the UFC and the Canadian Football League. One last segment with a Hall of Famer, Nick Lewis, with us, and we'll turn it loose to the viewers here uh, in viewer takeover. And actually, did I get to these texts? I don't think I did earlier, and I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, Todd in Red Deer watching says, Hey, Rod, love the show. Hope your wound has healed. I hacked the hell out of my face shaving yesterday. It's healed up quite nicely, actually. And thank you, Ryan, our technical producer, for his help on that. He says, I am an old guy, longtime CFL and Ryder fan, but has there been a better linebacker than Adam Big Hill? These eyes think not. Again, great show. Adam's a living Hall of Famer. We're watching a Hall of Famer on the field every week. They should just be blessed watching him. Uh, grateful. But for me... <laughs> Reggie Hunt's right up there, man. Uh, he really is. We put that to Wes Cates earlier. He mentioned Maurice Lloyd, who was a very uh, unheralded guy. Alondra Johnson. Oh, well, listen, stop. John Grace. You're talking another. Alondra Johnson's in another stratosphere linebacker. Yeah. John, in your face, Grace. John Grace, man, at my rookie year in my second year, he was the runner-up defense player of the year to Anwar Stewart, then the defense player of the year on a team that the offense was horrid my rookie year. Like, we were a horrible offense. Defense yeah. on the field all the time. So to make the plays, intercepting passes, getting sacks, creating fumbles, you know. So, yeah. Isn't that interesting, by the way, that John Grace isn't even mentioned, not even nowhere near the Hall of Fame? And why is that? It's, it's, it's such a stud. Yeah. You know, I always say, you know, longevity. I don't know what a lot of guys did before. Um, I know looking at when I got into the league, when we had uh, Scott Coe, um, George, and... George White? George White, John Grace, and Brian Clark, like running at 3-4. Studs. They were very dynamic in, in creating plays. So um, they inspired me uh, at an early age. So, man, those great guys, man. All great players. Yeah. D Dougal Cameron in Calgary. The Stamps will be okay with Huff Nagel on the sidelines to support Killam. Killam's been there for 16 years himself. From Peter Hughesley in the Queen City, he says, I love West Kate's analogy on Fajardo. I don't care how tough you are. He's one hit away from being done for the season. Cody's an average quarterback at best when healthy, and when he's laboring like he is, he's totally ineffective. Dola, Signed Dolagata. Dola, Dolagata, whatever his name is. He That's, has the it. Dolagata. To me, he's the best quarterback on the roster. He just don't know the game. He's got to learn the game. And, I mean, I, I, I don't know what Mason Fine is doing. Like, I, I'd have played <laughs> Dolagala last week. Like, it I seemed would. like to me Mason Fine in the preseason. I think he had like three completions the whole preseason. Like, and they built him up like he's Joe Montana around here. That's I mean, a sense that I get. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And Dolagella wasn't even on the roster, so who knows how and why they make these decisions. Janelle in Winnipeg, she's a Bomber fan, and she had a comment about Mike O'Shea going to the NFL. And to be honest, I wouldn't immediately discount that there have been a lot of guys go from the CFL to the NFL, but they're primarily Americans, and that shouldn't preclude anything. I shouldn't speak for Mike O'Shea. I barely know the man. Can't argue with success. I, you have to ask if he wants to or not, because he seems to be really be enjoying what he's doing. There's some factors. So when you look at coaching from CFL to college to NFL, CFL, you have a five-month season. You'll have some meetings in the offseason. If you maintain the same staff, That's lifestyle. you might get together for three weeks of the offseason. That means you have, set, you have pretty much six months off. College football, you're recruiting every year, every day except for two weeks. There's no off season. NFL, you have mini camps. 
You have – there's too many things. So you're coaching all year round. You might get a month off, month and a half off, two months. So for someone that says, hey, you know what, I would – like I, Mike O'Shea probably makes really good money and he's done it for a long time. So um, – and I'm pretty sure he gets well taken care of in Winnipeg. I don't see any hurry for someone like that to say, hey, I want to go coach in the NFL where it's much harder to win. You're going to start with a team that you know is not very good. Hmm. Do you get the proper time to build that team? That's why, the, that's why most teams always stay bad in the NFL. They never allow the new head coach to really set the tone over three or four years. <laughs> Jacksonville would be a good example. It's like saying, okay, we're going to drive over here, Rod. And then we get in the car, and then we're going to change directions. And then we're going to change directions again. You can't change directions every year. You have to pick a direction and, and say, look, we got to give you a chance to get there. And we know we don't have the talent now, but those are some of the things to think about when you look at a head coach and those opportunities. Nick, you are not just a pretty face. Because <laughs> when you say that, I think about the driving the car analogy is great. Because if you're changing direction every year, what are you doing? Going around in circles. 100%. And the problem with this is the fans have no patience. And it's in every sport. It's not just the NFL. They have no patience. And a lot of times it's an owner that doesn't know what he's doing. Again, back to the Jaguars. This Shad Khan seems like a hell of a great guy. A lot of fun at parties. No, shouldn't be running a football team. <laughs> but if you yeah. go back to Mike O'Shea when he first started, he wasn't doing very well. They stayed with I, the direction. Wouldn't you like to know how close they were to making a change when they were one and what were they, one and four, one and yeah. five? Whatever that – wouldn't you like to know? And would they ever say? I wonder if they would ever say. And Because I remember when they brought in um, the head coach for Ottawa now. Lapo. Lapo. They were like, why would you bring in your replacement? It was like, if he's who he's supposed to be, I won't get replaced. And it worked out really well um, in that situation. So being able to start to win and start to understand, like, okay – those are all difficult things. And, like, people act like winning in professional sports is easy. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I see, well, you, you, last minute of play on the RP show, you spent a lot of time around George Cortez, and I, as have I. And George, <laughs> it's in this small league it's hard enough to win. Imagine a 32-team league with all the other stuff going on. Yeah. Exponentially harder, which makes what the Patriots and Tom Brady have done just beyond mind-blowing. And beyond when- ex- most times in the CFL, the head coach is the highest paid, maybe a quarterback. But when you have guys making hundreds of millions of dollars and you're here making three or four or, or ten, like, trust me. How do you explain good, it? Good luck with that one and saying, hey, we're going to cut you. No, yeah. you're not. Or you're not playing this week. Yeah. That's not happening. Nick, have a great weekend. Really appreciate you coming in. Thank you. I appreciate The Hall of Famer, Nick Lewis. And uh, we will be from Edmonton and the World Juniors Monday from River Cree Resort and Casino in the City of Champions. Can't wait. Thanks, y'all. Great uh, job from the IKS crew. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday at noon Eastern. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Bob Geronco. Bingo. So. Hi, everybody. We found him. John Frenzy, the Hall of Fame writer, broadcaster, Lynch. The whole province is on red alert. They're worried about your health. <laughs> Give him an update. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Got out of the hospital two days ago. That's it? Yeah. They drove me out of it. Well, they pretty well took me outside and let me go back. <laughs> is that right? They didn't shoot you? They didn't shoot me. I was there for 11 days. Great people there, eh? Great people? Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so about, you... about frustrated fans, let me tell you that. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the riders, Lynch. What's your assessment? They're not good enough. <laughs> uh, weak offensive line for the second year in a row. You can't, when they, when they saw they had that weak, that weak offensive line, they should have had it rebuilt for this year, as you and I said before. It's worse than it was last year. It's really hurt the quarterback. Of course, uh, the center being gone, the uh, guy like Dan Clark being gone for pretty well the whole year. They got a couple of kids there. Can they fix this? Not this year. You mean for the playoffs? Yeah. To win the Great Cup in Regina? Yeah. No. No. No, I don't think so. Although we got some miracles, we got some guys out there like John Liff and um, and Peterson, not Peter, your Peterson, Van Stone, the Van Stone, and, and uh, the other guy, Tom, Tom Shepard, who's saying they're going to make it. They're going to make the crossover. 
but they're not going to make it. It's going to be tough. It's All gonna, right. They, they play BC twice more. And the BC Lions are tough. Really tough, as you know. Not the BC Lions of old, so it's going to be tough. And they play my, uh, a week from now, they play the, uh, Chris Jones in Edmonton. I'm worried about that game. They're on a break, they're on a break right now, eh? Riders are on a break right now, which they deserve and need. They need to buy, and they got to get themselves in shape. <laughs> the quarterback's hurt. He can't run very well. His leg's bad. Okay, Lynch. Right. I think we got it. Right. So you're going to live? Yeah, right. I think I so. I think All so. right. Uh, thank you so much, John Frenzy. Always good seeing you. Good seeing you, too. Just great. Awesome. Beautiful. How about that? I like it. LFG.